Hello, cookbook friends. This is Carrie with Cookbook Divas, and I have barking dogs. And I'm waiting for my Amazon Live friends to join us. Tonight, we're going to look through about eight or nine cookbooks from my recent library haul. Here we go. Just waiting for Amazon. Going to check it out. Maybe my dogs will shut up. All right. I go to the library every couple days and check out an armful of cookbooks, as many as I can carry without hurting my back. And we're going to look through them briefly. I have not reviewed them. I have not really opened them to look inside them, except for the in the library. We occasionally do a quick flip through reel over on Instagram so you can see the photos and decide if it's a cookbook that's interesting to you or not. I thought I would start tonight. Let me go to the end of my little Amazon list. Excuse me, I'm looking at my phone. This is Feast Recipes and Stories from a Canadian Road Trip. I have not looked through a lot of Canadian cookbooks, so I'm looking forward to it. Lindsay Anderson and Dana Van Veller are the authors. I'm going to figure out who published it. So thanks for joining us. Oh, you guys are on quickly. Hello. I'd love to hear where you're watching from and what your favorite kind of cookbook is. Meanwhile, let's dive into this Canadian cookbook. It came out in 2017. It's in good condition. I don't think anybody's checked it out from the library, actually. Starting off with interesting photos. Publisher is Appetite by... I can't read. Oh, Random House. It's a tiny little font. Okay, let's ch check out the table of contents. Daybreakers, breakfast and brunch. Grazing, starters, appetizers, and snacks. From the Garden, Vegetarian Mains, a chapter dear to my heart. I'm a vegetarian. Feathers and Tails, meat mains. Fish, oh, excuse me, fins and scales, seafood mains. Field trip, salads and sides. Sweet stuff, desserts and baking. For the mason jar, pickles, preserves, and sauces. And then the final chapter is cheers to drink. I actually would like to start off with that one. All right, we already had somebody drop off. Well, how rude. Fine, then this isn't for you. Forward. And introduction. I'm going to read just a little bit of the introduction since nobody's here yet. We have been asked time and time again why we decided to do a road trip and write about Canadian food culture. Our answers are always a little vague, and that's because we can't remember exactly how it all started. We think the first conversation began during a camping trip in Squamish, British, Col British Columbia, while eating chips and lounging on a fallen log in the river. The kind of moment when dreams get tossed around. Okay, let's jump into the beginning of the book. How to use this book. Okay, that's always pretty boring. Canning basics. All right, here they are on their road trip. Love the photography so far, but let's see what the food photography looks like. I love when chapters have an easily delineated beginning and you can see a food photo with them. Red Fife Crepes with sa sautéed plum sounds really good. Hello, those of you just joining us, we're looking through a Canadian road trip cookbook called Feast. And the first recipe we peeked at is Red Fife Crepes with sautéed plums. Next up, Eggs Galliano. Don't know what that means. I'm not familiar with that dish. Let me know if you've ever had it. It's baked eggs and tomato sauce, generally known as shakshuka, originates in Tunisia. Okay, I like shakshuka, and I eat that for breakfast about a couple times a month. Next up, a prairie cherry galette with lemon and thyme. Mmm, I love galettes. They're very forgiving. British Columbia, a little info on that. Hello from YouTube or Facebook. Let me know where you're watching from. Barley pancakes with blueberry sauce. Now, just to be clear, this is not a cookbook review because I've never looked through this before and I've never cooked anything out of it. I just picked it up at the library. Here's a recipe for bannock two ways. And something called beer waffles with salted butter. Hello, that's going to be popular, right? Canadians and beer. Oh, they love it. Salty rosemary granola. Now let's skip ahead because I can't show you the whole book. Now we're visiting the Yukon Territory where we are going to make wild mushroom toasts. And with goat cheese and black garlic vinaigrette, a spot prawn ceviche, raspberry point oysters. Hmm. Traditional Arctic char pipsy. Don't know what that is. This looks good. 
Nana Maria's Fiori Fritti fried zucchini flowers. Yum. I think there's a trick. You have to do something so they're not bitter, but I can't remember. And I'm sure this page explains that. We're going to jump to the next chapter from the garden, vegetarian mains. Sunchoke barley risotto. Fava bean tart. I wish the picture was a little bit bigger because that looks really good. Moroccan chickpea soup. Ooh, music festivals. Beet borscht. I didn't expect to see that in a Canadian cookbook. Sour cherry and ricotta pierogies. Oh, yum. Hello, those of you that just joined us, we're looking through a Canadian cookbook called Feast. We are live on Amazon Live, Facebook, and YouTube. Feathers and tails, meat mains. Bison, butternut squash and cranberry pie. Now that's an unusual recipe I've never seen in a cookbook. Don't know about you. Wow. Now we're visiting Alberta, Canada. And we're going to have a recipe for reindeer meatloaf and a Acadian, oh, excuse me, Acadian chicken frigot. I've never heard that word before. Frigo, frigot. Braised Arctic hare. Looks like comfort food. Lamb steaks with sage butter. We're in the meat chapter still. Here's a venison loin with wine, red currant, and dark chocolate reduction. Classic cabbage rolls. Let's jump to the next chapter if I can find it. Newfoundland. Something called a jigs dinner. I love these giant photos in this cookbook. That is really nice. We still do not have anyone joining us on Amazon. Roast turkey with sausage and apple stuffing. Remember that Canadian Thanksgiving is different than American Thanksgiving. It's a little bit before. Wild boar and fig meatballs. And now we're in the fins and scales chapter. For those of you that just joined us, we're looking through a Canadian cookbook. We'll be looking through about seven more cookbooks tonight that I grabbed at my library. Uh, crispy trout rice bowls. Let me know in the comments where you're watching from. And is it snowing there? Because it's almost snowing here in Seattle. Seared scallops. Of course, I'm not actually in Seattle. I'm in the suburbs way, way, way up on a hill where it's going to snow. Manitoba is where we're at next on our Canadian road trip. Pickerel in parchment. I think we're in the fish chapter. Arctic char sushi and tempura. Let me know if I'm going too fast, but I'm trying to make some headway because I can't show you the whole book. East Coast fish chowder. Seafood chowder, excuse me. Uh, grilled sardines with white bean stew. Nice comfort food. Now we're going to Quebec. Hello, Amazon Live. Let me know where you're watching from and what your favorite kind of cookbook is to look through and cook from. Brussels sprouts with honey and hazelnuts. For those of you that just joined us, we're looking through Feast, Canadian road trip cookbook. We're about halfway through. Hello from Western Kentucky. I'm glad you have joined us. Herb salad with pickled shallots. I just had tacos and tequila because it is National Margarita Day and Taco Tuesday. So I went to a restaurant, warm beluga lentil, crab apple, and chorizo salad. It kind of looks like a hot mess on the plate, but that is a good food photograph. West Coast salad with hollyhock dressing. Wait, are hollyhocks flowers, I think? I guess they must be edible flowers. We have two people joining us on Amazon Live. I'm making my way through this uh, feast recipes from Canada, moving in my way through seven more cookbooks tonight before I go watch Jeopardy. Anybody else Jeopardy fans here? Grilled eggplant and roasted tomato salad. I have learned from watching Jeopardy that geography and science and sports and music is not my strong suit, nor is memorizing the presidents. I have a lot of studying to do, so I don't embarrass myself when I watch Jeopardy in front of my boyfriend. Sweet stuff chapter. Desserts and baking. This will be fun. I think everybody always prefers the baking part. This is a lunar rhubarb cake. I don't know why they called it Lunar, because I haven't read this part yet, but I suspect it's because that looks like Moon Craters. I bet it's delicious. Nanaimo bars. If you don't know what a Nanaimo bar is, Google it. It's spelled N-A-N-A-I-M-O. And those of us that live on the West Coast near British Columbia love those. Arctic apple fritters. Yum! How good does that look? Hello, Amazon viewers. Financier à la robe. Maple and buckwheat financier cakes. They look kind of boring, but I bet they're delicious. We're visiting Prince Edward Island. 
Do you know why so many people love Prince Edward Island? Let me know in the comments before I give you a hint. There's a children's book that's set there. Cape Breton Butterscotch Pie. And it's Anne of Green Gables. Spoiler alert. Goat Yogurt Fudge. Yum. Okay, we better jump out of this book. Let's go to the drinks chapter. But I want to show you this sugar pie photo because that looks so good. And the pie shop pastry. Okay, we're in the drink chapter. Wait, no. We're in the for the mason jar chapter. Excuse me, I skipped ahead. Preserves, pickles, and sauces. Peach and apricot chutney. I have actually never made chutney myself. Have you? We're going to Newfoundland now on this little road trip. Icebergs, whales, puffins, cod, Viking settlements, and big-hearted folks. Newfoundland is one damn fine place. Wow, that's some good writing. Okay. Yukon sourdough starter, green tomato chow chow, pickled asparagus with lavage or... Yeah, I think that's lavage, lavage, and tarragon. Uh, what else? Clove spiced lingonberry sauce. That would be good at breakfast. And now sweet and smoky barbecue sauce. Cheers! The drink chapter, and then we'll move into the next cookbook. The Hendrix Carrie. Hey, my name is Carrie, but I spell it differently. And Raspberry and Thyme Cordial, inspired, I'm guessing, by Anne of Green Gables. That was Feast. I really liked this cookbook. I'm glad I have it for another couple weeks before I have to take it back. I'd love to hear what is the first thing you would cook out of this one for those of you that watched the entire cookbook look through. All right. Next up, I hope I'm saying this right. It's a Spanish cookbook. And let me focus on it on Amazon. There we go. Let me highlight it. Is it Curate or Curate? Authentic Spanish food from an American kitchen. Katie Button with Genevieve Co. are the authors. I love the cover. Forward is by Ferran Adria, super famous, and Jose Andres. And it came out in 2016. Off to a colorful start. Anybody like Spanish cookbooks here? And I don't mean Mexican, I mean Spanish. And I love when Spanish cookbooks do not just focus on tapas. I love tapas, but I want to know more. The publisher is Flatiron Books. They publish a lot of awesome cookbooks. Let's check out the table of contents. Starters, soups and salad, seafood, meat and poultry, vegetables, noodles, rice and beans, brunch and lunch, and desserts. And we're in a restaurant kitchen. And forward. Let's get to the recipes. I should have looked up how to say this. Curate. I don't know. Sounds like a bad word when I say it like that. Introduction. In my home, people are always eating. Whether it's a freshly made pan con tomate, excuse me, pan con tomate thrown together from the last of the ripe summer tomatoes, good olive oil and some crusty bread, or a big pan of seafood paella shared amongst three generations in a backyard summer feast, or a lunch of leftover tortilla española along a simple, alongside a simple green salad scattered with candied nuts. No matter the meal, cooking and serving delicious Spanish food at home is much easier than you might think. Oh, really? Well, let's get to it. So a long forward with pictures of the author and the restaurant. And, ooh, a map. And some pantry items that we're supposed to have. La la la, gear. Whoa! I don't want to know what that is because I am vegetarian and I suspect that is not. Okay, starters. Tomato bread, Spanish potato, onion, and egg tortilla, cocktail skewers, croquettes, and creamy salt cod and potato spread. <gasps> so here's the tomato bread, pan con tomate. A lot of bars will serve this to you when you sit down as you're thinking about your drink order. I need to go to Spain. I love, this is my favorite item at tapas restaurants. The tortilla española. Yum. And I've never tried to make it at home. And this recipe involves 10 large eggs. Wow. Cocktail skewers. And actually, this cookbook had a stain on the page before, so someone actually cooked out of it. Yay. Croquetas. You can make plain ones. Ham croquettes, chicken croquettes, mushroom croquettes. And how to shape and fry them. Good info. And boy, they look good. Creamy salt cod and potato spread. Now, I can't show you every recipe in this book, so I better move ahead. 
Soups and salads, maybe not the most exciting chapter. Cold almond and garlic soup with crab and green grapes. Now that, I take it back. That's exciting. That's something I do not usually see in a cookbook. Creamy butternut squash soup is something I normally see in a cookbook. Almost every one. Russian potato salad. A lot of Spanish cookbooks have this recipe. Why is that? Let's Google it and find out. Roasted beet salad with candied orange, manchego, and marcona almonds. Tuna and tomato salad. Whoa! Sautéed shrimp with garlic. Not exactly a recipe you need because we all know how to do that. Clams and chorizo in cider. Gotta go to another chapter. Whoa! There's a lot going on here. I'm just gonna let you look at that for a second. Whoa! Okay. Cured trout with tomato, black olive, and onion. Fresh cod with tomato sauce and garbanzos. Okay. Wow. Grilled spiced rubbed hanger steak. Marinated lamb skewers. Ham and cheese stuffed fried pork chops. Heart attack on a plate. Sounds really good. Here we are at the market. Homemade pork sausages for those of you adventurous people with lots of time on your hands. Blood sausages with rice. And chicken stock. Quail in escabeche. Escabeche. Here's the vegetables chapter. I'm going to enjoy this one a lot more. White asparagus with an airy mayonnaise. I first tasted white asparagus at the Spanish restaurant in Aria Hotel in Las Vegas. And I forget the name of the chef. Dang it. Well. Uh, stewed peppers, eggplant, tomato, and onions. Fried eggplant with honey and rosemary. How good does that sound? Woo! Sautéed breadcrumbs with cauliflower and Brussels sprouts. Hello and welcome. Someone just joined us on Facebook or YouTube. Were you looking through a Spanish cookbook? And we're going to look through about six more before the night is done. Oh, cute. There's their baby. So that baby is probably in kindergarten right now because this cookbook is from 2017. Salted potatoes with herb sauce. Confit, piquillo, piquillo peppers. Noodles, rice, and beans chapter. This will be good. Squid ink pasta. Uh, lots of info on paella. Going to keep going. Vegetable paella. Thank you. Vegetarians, thank you for that. Seafood stew with rice, fish, lobster, and mussels. And brunch and lunch chapter. Who doesn't love brunch? Spanish coffee with orange whipped cream. Ooh, nice. And fried eggs over potato chips and serrano ham. Now we're in the dessert chapter. Let me show you just a couple. <gasps> Ooh, almond cake with cream, sherry, and brandy. And look how pretty that is. The powdered sugar design on top. Love it. Egg flan. Of course, there's a flan recipe. There always is. Honey and goat cheese custards. That would be nice and light and refreshing after a big meal when you just want a little dessert. Chocolate brandy sabayon. Yum. So this is a pretty awesome cookbook. I definitely recommend it. When I get off camera tonight, before I watch Jeopardy, I'm going to look through this more slowly by myself, carefully. Next up, I don't know anything about this cookbook. Chicken and charcoal. What is happening? What is this? Yakitori, Yardbird, Hong Kong by Matt Abergel. Abergel? I have no idea what's going on. Let's find out. This might be a quick flip through if we don't like it. October 2018. The publisher, I'm not sure. It starts off with an illustration that's kind of creepy. Okay, chapters. What came first? Service, Lindsay Jang, Sean Dix, Evan Hickox. You just have to ask for it. The chicken, butchering, skewering, grilling, vegetables, small or bigger, the basics, cocktails and highballs. Staff, sisters from different misters, brothers from different mothers. Okay, so whoever wrote this has a great sense of humor. <laughs> what came first? I've always loved chicken. Roasted Cornish hens by my bubby, Yiddish for grandmother. Braised by my softa, Hebrew for grandmother. Fried at the St. Louis Hotel, rotisserie at Swiss Chalet, in nugget form by you-know-who. But most of all, I love chicken when it's grilled over charcoal. Okay, that's why we're doing this. Oh, I see an old recipe book with handwriting in it. 
And those of you that just joined us on Amazon, YouTube, and Facebook, hello and welcome. I'm going to skip ahead to the recipes. Okay, they're introducing us to their cooks from their restaurant. I'm not sure what's going on. You've just got to ask for it. I'm not sure why there's some shoes in here. I think this is more of a biography than an actual recipe. But here's some kitchen action going on. Aha! Here's how to butcher. Warning. Could be a little graphic. I'm skipping ahead. Mm -hmm. The different cuts of chicken that you can do. Skewering. Okay. Lots of informative photos. Whoa! And illustrations. I didn't know there were so many. This is the Achilles oyster soft knee bone neck wing heart ventricle gizzard meatball duck meatball. Okay. Hmm. This is a little difficult for me as a vegetarian, so I'm going to flip through. But I don't judge you if you want to eat all this good stuff. Okay. Whoa. Where are the recipes? Lots and lots and lots of pictures. That would be very helpful if you're learning to grill at a higher level. Wow. Mm hmm. Step by step by step by step. It goes on and on. Okay. Vegetables. Phew. Vegetables chapter. And this is the cookbook we're looking through because some people just joined us. Pickled cucumber, daikon, and red shiso. These are gorgeous photos. Fruit and tomato salad. Eggplant salad with pickled garlic and ginger tosazu. Miso soup. Asparagus with onsen egg and nori dressing. So lots of Asian influences here. KFC, Korean flight, fried cauliflower. Fried chicken with garlic QP mayo. Mushroom rice. Ooh, that looks really good. Now we're back to the basics. Chicken stock, nori dressing, red dirt chicken fat. A drink called the Bloody Kim Jong-il. A drink called the Wakayama Margarita. And it's National Margarita Day. Wow, that was very informative. If you know someone that likes barbecuing and really wants to learn to master the art of chicken barbecuing, woo, that's the cookbook for them. Let us move on. Next up, I have the Latin American Cookbook. Let me focus on that on Amazon for the two people watching from there. Hello, where are you watching from? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Okay, the Latin American Cookbook I grabbed from the library because I also want to look through lots of Latin American cookbooks and haven't yet. But look at this cover. Hot pink and red. I had to go for it. Uh, Virgilio or Virgilio Martinez. We would say Virgil in American, but in Spanish, I think it's for Helio. Let me know. Anyway, Fidon is the publisher. They publish really awesome cookbooks that are expensive and heavy. This came out December. I don't know what year because the library stamp didn't show. Table of contents, breads and baked goods, grains, quinoa and amaranth corn, beans and lentils, dairy and eggs, sandwiches, roots and tubers, garden vegetables, fruit, fish and seafood, Pork, lamb and goat, sweet sales, sauces and condiments, beef, poultry, native meats, and insects. Drinks. Woo! Okay. Introduction. Growing up in Peru's capital city, Lima, my perception of food from other Latin American countries, such as Argentina or Brazil, not to mention the furthest corners of Peru, was limited. Some of the more obscure ingredients would find their way to Lima, though I had a poor understanding of their possibilities. Traveling through the region, however, has given me the chance to discover firsthand how spectacular our food is, but also how much remains to be revealed. Nice. Oh, some beautiful photos of Latin America. And hello, Amazon viewers. But let's get to the food. Aha. All right. Right here. I do not know what this is a picture of. Oh, it says down here. Phew. Mapucha wheat bread. There's also a recipe for roti and one for Colombian cheese rolls. So we don't have a picture for every recipe in this cookbook. Oh, no. I will really like it when they have lots of pictures. Andean bread baby, Venezuelan ham bread, chilote potato bread, Chilean country bread. So in this case, they're going to really bombard us with awesome recipes from all of the cultures in Latin America. So I can see how they can't afford to have pictures for everyone because this is already a giant cookbook. So you see how I've been flipping through for a few seconds and I don't see a picture at all. Uh-oh. Well, this will make this a short cookbook look through. <laughs> okay, but here's one, Chilean biscuits. When they do have a photo, it's beautiful. This is charcoal baked bread and I'm surprised because it doesn't look charred or, or burned at all. Chickpea flatbread, Chilean squash fritters. 
Middle Eastern style meat flatbread. Belizean meat pie and Surinamese chicken pot pie. Yum. All right. Here's Trujillo, Trujillo style wheat soup. Wow. So they do have pictures. They're just on the other side of the page most of the time. Ooh, and I just saw something awesome I want to show you. Venezuelan pasta casserole and rice and black-eyed peas and Peruvian leftover rice and beans. Okay, now that I get where the pictures are, I'll pull out some really good ones to show you. How about spicy potato pork and beef stew? Let's find something really colorful. Whoa, that looked good. Okay, corn masa cakes. Very simple. This is Guatemalan tamales. Ooh, this is pretty. Yucatecan fried tortillas from Yucatan. Some salads, they're kind of boring. I'm going to keep flipping. Whoa, this looks pretty. Piloy means salad. And this is awara broth. I'm going to learn a lot from looking through this. Plantains with spicy peanut sauce. Yum. Do you like plantains? Hello. Tuning in from NYC. Hi, Tanya. Welcome back. And Colombian egg and milk soup. There's something I want to chat with Tanya because she is our super fan. And welcome to our other Amazon viewers. We're looking through a Latin American cookbook. We are renaming all of our cookbook reviews on YouTube to cookbook previews because people have been whining that we don't actually cook anything out of the cookbooks because we're too busy looking through every cookbook on the planet. We don't have that kind of time. So we're going to rename everything to cookbook previews because we're just looking through them. I don't have time to cook tonight. I just got back from a restaurant anyway. Curry fried snapper. And, oh, we just saw a nice picture. Here's Bahian shrimp and okra gumbo. And sea urchins in salsa verde. I'm really glad I found that this cookbook has a ton of pictures because now I'm loving them. Whoa! Lake Yoho style fried fish. Colombian braised beef or Colombian, I should say. Thank you for the follow, Amazon customer. Glad to have you on board. Pork ribs dusted with corn flour. I have not seen a lot of book bloggers on Amazon Live yet, so I'm a little nervous to be spending this much time blogging about cookbooks. Colombian chicken and potato stew. And, okay, this is something I've never seen in a cookbook. Fried guinea pig. I'm not going to comment. I'm just going to leave that there for you. Okay. Meanwhile, here's a lamb's head soup. Mm -mm, I'm not going to... No, we're going to get out of this chapter. Okay. How about the Swedes chapter? Wow. Oh, that was rough. Okay. Santa Fe style alpha whore. If I said that right. Dolce du leche thousand layer cake. This is called broken underwear. <laughs> what? That is an awesome name. I really like it. Okay. We're almost done with this Latin American cookbook. Here is plantains in mole. And mole takes so long to cook. Hello, Nadia Vasilov and Anita English from Western Kentucky. I read that earlier. Excuse me. Paraguayan sweet polenta. And Colombian fried bananas. This is a very interesting cookbook. I'm going to have to look through it more thoroughly. I might, uh, we'll be doing a full YouTube look through on this and we'll take a lot more time to go more slowly on that. So next up, I'm moving the book for the people watching on Amazon. I picked up this interesting French cookbook, Cuisine Grandmère, Traditional French Home Cooking. I love the Art Deco cover. Looks like an old advertisement. It's by Marie-Pierre Moine. July 2001. It's one of the older cookbooks that I've looked through in this channel. And this font is really hard to read when I have a ring light slamming in my face. So let me see how I can do. Now, glasses on, glasses off. In this delightful book, we rediscover the pleasures of traditional French home cooking conjured from the memories of the author and her family in the good old days before Nouvelle Cuisine and convenience food began to undermine it. 
All the great classic recipes are included, plus many lesser known treasures. In the 1970s, France was rocked by the Nouvelle Cuisine movement, which advocated healthier food and smaller meals. How dare they! Mm. Restaurants on both sides of the channel strove to outdo each other with beautiful presentation, complex ingredients, and miniature portions. Traditional cooking was ignored. Oh. Recently, however, the tide has turned, and today's chefs strongly supported by a jaded and hungry public are now returning to the principles of traditional country cooking, still enjoyed in the majority of French homes. This will be fun. That was kind of bitchy. I love it. All right. Time Life Books published this, and they're using vintage advertisements as their artwork. The chapters are introduction, a few remarks, soups, appetizers, hot appetizers, fish and seafood, poultry game and meat, vegetables, and then, of course, desserts. Hello. Thanks for joining us on Amazon. Drop me a note where you're watching from. Okay, here's the introduction. Let's get to the food. Uh, the, they're showing some old photos. That's nice. Okay, we're in the soup chapter. I can tell right off the bat this is an old-fashioned 2001 cookbook because though they have some beautiful vintage illustrations, it's not going to be very photographic and colorful, but that's okay. Soups. Pumpkin soup. Fresh pea soup. Vegetable soup with basil, garlic, and cheese. I would immediately cook that tomorrow if I have time. Onion soup with Roquefort cheese. Lentil soup. I need a new lentil soup recipe. This one includes smoked bacon. I will not include that. Leek, carrot, and potato soup and a nice vintage ad. Welcome, Amazon visitors. Asparagus and herb vichyssoise. Creamy mushroom soup. I'm always looking to try new mushroom soup recipes. And this one is chilled spinach and avocado soup. Maybe in summer. And celery root mayonnaise. Mushroom salad. Black olive puree. We would call that tapenade if this is an Italian cookbook. Chilled melons with sweet wine, salmon roulettes, hard-boiled eggs with anchovy mayonnaise. We're in the hot appetizers chapter, crepes stuffed with spinach, scrambled eggs with roulettes, hot cheese croustades, toasted cheese and ham, a croque monsieur, maison, uh, Provençal onion and anchovy tart, quiche Lorraine, I'm jumping ahead, scallops with saffron cream, Chicken with a vinegar sauce or stuffed boiled chicken. Quick duck confit. Huntsman's chicken. Slow cooked beef casserole. Beef cooked in red burgundy wine. Improved canned areco beans. Stuffed mushrooms. Now we're in the dessert chapter in this tiny little cookbook. There's a recipe for meringue apples. One for pears and red wine. One for peaches and white wine. That sounds delicious. Uh, eggs in the snow, apricot and strawberry compote, floating island, vanilla and red fruit ice cream, and that is it. Let's learn about the author for a second. It says, Marie Pierre Moin was born in Paris and brought up there and in the Loire Valley, where her grandmother had a large home and well-staffed kitchen. She now lives in London with her husband. She was the editor of Taste magazine, until December 1988, and now writes on food and wine. Okay, next up, another French cookbook, but this one is massive. I'm kind of dreading holding it up because it's really heavy. Around my French table. Dory Greenspan. We all love her. If you don't know who Dory Greenspan is, please Google her and you'll love her. James Beard Award winner. This is Around My French Table, more than 300 recipes from my home to yours. And be sure to look up the Baking with Dory cookbook that came out very recently in the last four months. It's getting, oh my gosh, every blogger that bakes is trying her recipes and posting beautiful photos, especially on Instagram. It's awesome. So this is massive. Okay. Totally doable, delightfully delicious. Ugh. Okay. I'm going to try to hold this up without getting a neck ache and read what this is. It came out in February 2011. Julia Child paid Dory Greenspan the ultimate compliment when she said, you write recipes just the way I do. Now, in a book that does for a new generation what mastering the art of French cooking did for its time, Dory captures all of the excitement of French cooking today 
with disarmingly simple dishes gathered over years of living in France. This food is surprising, even revolutionary, a mix of old and new, traditional and exotic, store-bought and homemade, simple and complex, as Dory writes in the introduction. Around my French table include superb renditions of the classics, such as a glorious cheese-domed onion soup, a spoon-tender beef daub, and the top-secret chocolate mousse recipe that every good Parisian cook knows but won't reveal. Whoa, I love chocolate mousse. Let's see if I can find the table of contents. She dedicated to, for Michael, who made my dream of a French life come true, and with whom I am so lucky to share the joys of that life. Oh, nice. Acknowledgements. This book is special to me in every way, special because I got to write about the food I love in France, a country that means so much to me, and very special because I got to work with an extraordinary group of people, many who of whom I've been fortunate enough to work with for years. Okay. Contents. Nibbles and hors d'oeuvres, soups, salad starters and small plates, chicken and duck, beef, veal, pork and lamb, fish and shellfish, vegetables and grains. She writes mostly sides, but a few mains too. Then desserts and at the end, fundamentals and flourishes. So we're looking through Around My French Table by Dory Greenspan. And the first chapter starts off with a generous amount of photography. And there's tons of recipes in this chapter, starting off with Gougeres. Goat cheese mini puffs, cheese its crackers, mustard batons, herbed olives, zatziki, sardine roulettes, salmon roulettes, tuna roulettes, caviar and aspic, dieters tartine. Okay, well, let's look at the gougeres. So, wow, if I was really going to get serious about French cooking, I'm thinking already this is going to be the cookbook for me. I just skipped over a couple of recipes that did not have photos, so FYI, not everyone has one. David seaweed sables, mustard batons, no photo. Herbed olives, no photo. But we know what olives look like. Hummus, we don't need a picture of hummus. Here's Leonay's garlic and herb cheese. I'm going to skip ahead and try to find some truly glorious things to show you. Salmon roulettes. Um, tartines. Goat cheese tartine. Okay. What kind of tartine is this? Sorry, this cookbook is really heavy. Goat cheese and strawberry tartine. Oh, this is a pizza ladier. Here it is. Woo! I didn't just say a bad word. Look it up if you need to. Mm. Now we're in the soups chapter in this giant cookbook. Kind of regretting it. There's a soup here called cheating on winter pea soup. There's an asparagus soup, a corn soup, and a simple party soup. Cream topped asparagus, red pepper, and broccoli. Thanks for your patience as I'm struggling to lift this up. Leek and potato soup. A Paris mushroom soup. But they only showed the mushrooms, not the finished product. Beatrix, Beatrix's red curry soup. K-U-R-I. I've never heard that term. Hmm. Provençal vegetable soup, of course. Garbour from the supermarket. Never heard of that term. Boy, I'm learning a lot. Orange scented lentil soup. That sounds good to me. I'm going to have to skip ahead here to salad starters and small plates. What's a good example of that? Roasted peppers. Very French, yes. Mozzarella, tomato, and strawberry salad. Heavy on the mozzarella. No complaining here. Bacon and eggs and asparagus salad. Cheesy creme brulee. Munster cheese souffles. Gerard's mustard tart. Yum, that looks really good. It looks very French. Salmon and potatoes in a jar. I'm not sure what's going on there, why you would jar them. Ugh. How about preserved lemons and chicken basquace? Basquace? I don't know how to say that. Chicken bastilla. Now we're in another chapter. Beef on a string, they're calling this. Whoa, huge picture. Let's jump ahead. Wow, fish and shellfish chapter. Mediterranean swordfish with frilly herb salad. Curried mussels. Now we're in the vegetables and grains section. Let's look at a couple of those. Endives, apples, and grapes. Mashed potatoes, several different ways. Potato gratin, very French. Gonna skip ahead. Desserts. 
I know we've all been waiting to see the dessert chapter. Welcome, our Amazon viewer. Long and slow apples. Apples two ways. Spice poached apples. Roasted rhubarb. A citrus berry terrine. Look how pretty that is. I have not seen anything like that in a cookbook before. Wow. And waffles and cream. Cour de la creme. Oh, that's sweet. That would be nice for Valentine's Day. Caramel topped semolina cake. We know Dari is a baker. Uh, okay. And I think we should be done because this is really hard to hold up. Wow. Around my French table. We have three cookbooks left to look through if you'd like to stick around. Uh, two French cookbooks and one Southern Italian desserts. So next up is Timeless Paris. Atelier's emporiums and savoir faire i'm not entirely sure this is a cookbook but i love the way little french shops look so much i had to just grab it from the library anyway so if it's not a cookbook i will put it away very quickly and move on to the next book that hopefully is so in paris enchantment awaits around every corner an artist marin montagut marvels in discovering the ateliers and emporiums that pepper the capital for centuries, the artisanal trades associated with the city have continued to hum uninterrupted in unique workshops seemingly untouched by time. Today, skilled craftspeople continue to restore architectural details, print lithographs, weave decorative trimmings, hand wool pastels, or blend traditional herbal remedies. So this is beautiful. It came out on October 21, October 2021. And I'm guessing this is not a cookbook because I think I got it from my library for some other reason because I love French stores so much. Okay. I don't think there's any recipes, so I'm going to move on. And I feel kind of dumb right now. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it's going to be pretty to look through. I would love to have stores like this in Seattle to shop in, but we do not. And frankly, downtown Seattle is pretty dangerous right now, and I won't go shopping there. Ah. Oh. Okay, I will put this away because it's not a cookbook, but let's just flip through really fast. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm going to have fun exploring this. Okay, I'm pretending that I'm shopping there. Well, that was not a cookbook. I'm blushing. Moving on. Southern Italian desserts. This will be a cookbook. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it is by Rosetta Costantino. Costantino. <sighs> Rediscovering the sweet traditions of Calabria, Campania, Basilicata, Puglia, and Sicily. In this authentic guide to the festive, mouth-watering sweets of her southern Italian homeland, author of the acclaimed My Calabria, or Calabria, Rosetta Costantino, collects 75 favorite recipes from the regions of Calabria, Campania, Basilicata, Puglia, and Sicily. And if I mispronounced any of those, I've only ever heard Sicily said out loud, so don't yell at me, please. Thank you. These picturesque areas have a rich history of beautiful desserts, many of them tied to holidays and festivals. For example, Zipole di San Giuseppe, or donut-like pastries topped with cream and cherries, yum. They're traditionally made in Campania for the celebration of Father's Day and the Sicilian chilled watermelon pudding called Gelo de Melone is a refreshing dish served in summer for the festival of Palermo's patron saint Rosalia. Uh, other desserts such as persimmon gelato, chocolate dipped figs stuffed with almonds and candied orange peel, yum, and chocolate hazelnut cake rolls celebrate southern Italy's local bounty and traditional foods. With recipes for more familiar Italian desserts, such as cannoli and gelato, as well as deliciously obscure sweets, such as rich cassatas, almond-flecked cookies, and flaky cream-filled sfogliatelle pastries. How did I do on that? Southern Italian desserts features a treat for every occasion. Well, let's check it out. Ten Speed Press in Berkeley is the publisher. They make so many good cookbooks. Photography by Sarah Remington. Donated to the author's children, Adrian and Danielle. Table of Contents. An introduction to Southern Italian desserts. A Southern Italian dessert pantry. And then Cecilia. 
Campania, Calabria, or Calabria, Puglia, and Basilicata, and Master Recipes. Okay. Ooh, gelato. So this we have two cookbooks left before I take off to go drink tequila and watch Jeopardy. Here's the introduction to Southern Italian desserts. Southern Italy has a long-standing and well-deserved reputation for its lavish desserts, starting as early as 827 AD, when the Arabs first brought sugar to the area. Desserts here draw on a diversity of ingredients that reflect the area's long history of invasion and occupation by the Greeks, Romans, Byzantines, Lombards, Normans, Spanish, and French. Woo! Its location along the spice trading routes that cross through the Mediterranean was fortuitous, bringing the exotic flavorings of faraway places to the region, including chocolate, cinnamon, and cloves. And we have a comment kind of late today as well, joining at the last minute. Hi, Ishara. I have two cookbooks left, and we're looking through Southern Italian desserts. You haven't missed much because the last book I just looked through wasn't even a cookbook. Whoops. Okay. Going to a Southern Italian dessert pantry. All the things you need to have, like a pasta machine, etc. All right. First recipe that I see is pasti pasticcini di mandorla, soft almond cookies. Yum. I love almond cookies. Lots and lots of directions. Woo! Or instructions. Next up, sesame seed cookies that are called biscotti regina. Next up, biscotti eureka. These are almond-filled spiral cookies. Hello from Rome. Hi, Rome. Nice to see you back. Thanks for joining us. Africano chocolate hazelnut cake rolls. But, oh, there is a picture of them. Oh, nice. This is the Southern Italian Desserts Cookbook for those of you just joining us. Look at this beautiful watermelon pudding tart. I have never seen a recipe like this in a cookbook before. Wow. Nice. Here's a Cassata Siciliana. Oh my gosh, look how intricate that is. Oh my goodness. It is a decorated ricotta filled sponge cake. And... I'm going to skip the ones that don't have pictures. This is called a torta gatto pardo. It almost looks blue on the top. It could just be the photography. I'm not sure what's happening. Uh, now we have a cannoli siciliani. A Sicilian cannoli. And I can only picture myself getting frustrated trying to fill that with a pastry bag. Ah, Yep, and here they are, step-by-step -step photos. Oh, they're filling it with a spoon. How to make the crunchiest, creamiest cannoli. Nice little tip page. Uh, watermelon pudding recipe. Cannoli ice cream. Sounds good. I'd eat that. Campania. We're in another region now for their desserts. I'm excited to see what they have. Ooh, Amarina cherry cookies. Is there a picture? Nope. This is La Deliciosa from a different page. I love cherry cookies. Here is a torta ricotta e pear. Ricotta and pear cake. Torta caprese, almond cake. Ooh, here's Easter pie with wheat berries and ricotta. What are wheat berries? I'm not sure I've had those. Have you? Let's get to the next recipe. Ooh, tartlets with three fillings. Those are cute. So Spiri, little cakes filled with pastry cream. Cute. Licorice frozen dessert. Ooh, no, thank you. Here's chocolate dipped dried figs with almonds and candied orange peel. And now we're in another region, region Puglia and Basilicata, which have a different style. Walnut cookies, ch chunky almond biscotti. Little cinnamon cookies. Sweet goat cheese tart. Oh, cute. Fried pastry rosettes bathed in mastocato. I have a rosette that you use. It's like a metal thing you put in hot oil once you dip it in dough. But I don't know what mastocato is. Walnut? I have no idea. Oh, there's a recipe for it on page 197. Now I'm curious. Are you? Let's look it up. 197. What is Mastocato? 
Oh, vino cotto, great must, or wine syrup. I have access to that because I live in wine country here in Seattle. We have a wine region called Woodenville, and I bet I could get my hands on some great must. Here is fried half moon pastries with a chickpea chocolate filling. Sweet short crust pastry, pastry cream, etc. You get the drift. That was amazing. So that's the watermelon pudding cake on the cover. I have never seen a dessert like that. Love it. I'm going to check that out. Might not make it. So one more cookbook left. Who's here to go through this with us? Drop me a note before we end this. The final cookbook today is also heavy. It is Mimi Thorson, known for her French cookbooks. This is French country cooking meals and moments from a village in the vineyards. Woo! I'm excited to look through this one. I'm going to definitely do a lot, lot longer look through of this on our channel that Amazon doesn't want me to direct you to. <clears throat> you can look for Cookbook Divas on all of your favorite social media channels, except for TikTok. Okay. French country cooking. A captivating journey to off the beaten path French wine country with 100 simple yet exquisite recipes and stories inspired by life in a small village. Okay, I'm very curious about this. Mimi Thorson is so well known for her cookbooks, and I've barely looked through a couple of them. October 2016. Clarkson Potter is the publisher. Oh, they're so good at cookbooks. They just are. Here's our beautiful author. And I'm assuming this is her home in the French countryside. Table of contents. Number one, Rue de Loudin. Number two is a family restaurant, and then Goutte, and then the importance of L'Apero, which I'm thinking is drinks. Starters, main courses, Sunday suppers, and famille. Staff meals, side dishes, and desserts. Prologue. About a hundred years ago, a woman named Plantia Potard lived with her husband, a baker, in St. Yezens, a small village in the Medoc region of France. She was a formidable, renowned cook, fascinated by food and driven by ambition. Her talents were, it seems, not limited to the kitchen, for she was also the mistress of the richest man in town, Monsieur Briand, the town's mayor. It was all, as they say, very French. Okay, I'm going to summarize this for you. Monsieur Briand bought the largest, most opulent house in town, and then it became a hotel, and blah, 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 people, and then Mimi ended up in the house. Okay. So there's the house. I had to summarize that because we don't have all day. And here she is. I'm assuming that's her husband and children, and they're tearing down old wallpaper, and they're fixing up the house. Ooh, there's the dining room. And, oh. Here's the first recipe of the cookbook. Yay, we finally got to the recipe. It is Plantia's Tarte to Tan. And I see some apples and a pastry, etc. And here's where they picked the apples. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to go in your backyard and pick apples to make pie with? She's writing about her family restaurant. That she ran there. Okay. Goûte. Everyday pear cake. There it is. Uh, something called a Far Breton serves eight. Gâteau Breton, so a Breton cake, I guess, with flour, sugar, egg yolks, dark rum, a vanilla bean, and whole milk. And apple pancakes. Hello, Amazon viewer. We are looking through our final cookbook of the day, which is Mimi Thorson's French Country Cooking. And this is cinnamon crepes with cream and strawberries. So we're in the breakfast chapter. I'm skipping ahead to a rhubarb and raspberry cordial. Tomato gazpacho. Lobster bisque. With lots of instructions, I notice. Fishy soie. Lots of pictures. Chanterelle and garlic tartlets. Yum. That is the first thing I would make out of this cookbook, personally. Awesome. Oh, pearl onion tarts to tan. That is so cute. And I have some pearl onions in the house right now. So beautiful photography, etc. Broiled oysters with foie gras and sauternes wine. Not everyone's going to be cooking that around here, but you might. Here's a poulet chasseur. Chicken something or other. 
a quail milfoy. No, thank you. And, ooh, not sure what's going on here. And Comte cheese, ham, and walnut fouillette. Looks like a hand pie, doesn't it? Wine harvest pot au fond. Comfort food and also fresh vegetables. And dives with ham. Looks like some kind of a casserole. Memolette and Comte mac and cheese. Have you had Memolette yet? It's this orange cheese. You can get it at Whole Foods. It's super expensive. You can kind of crush it between your finger. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Okay, side dishes. We're almost done with this cookbook. Swiss chard gratin. I would make that. Gratin d'affinois. Now we're in the dessert chapter. Ooh, I skipped a lot. Let me find just a couple of the best pictures. Pardon me while I look down looking for them. Walnut cake. Meh. Plum pan perdu. Cheese. Yes, cheese is a very French dessert. Mm. Strawberry tart. Beautiful. Let's end on that note. That is French country cooking. I can't wait to go look through it more thoroughly. But first, I have to get ready to watch Jeopardy. And I have to go feed my dogs. So thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody stopping in. You can see more of my library cookbook reviews on Amazon Live probably every night, depending on what I'm doing. Tomorrow, we're having a little tea party but I forget what time you can see it in my upcoming streams. And we're also talking about Julia Child cookbooks pretty soon too. I just have to find them in my office and pull them together so we can look through them together. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to end on Amazon first, and then I'm going to end on YouTube and Facebook. Good night.